Thank you. Good morning. My name is Olga Ritke, and I'm working um, as the coordinator for wireless remote animal monitoring infrastructure at the Swedish University of Agricultural Sciences, together with my colleague Deborah Alt, and together with <laughs> Johan Beckmann and Mathieu Blanchet from the Center for Animal Movement Can Move at Lund University. We are working within the Swedish biodiversity data infrastructure with novel concepts on managing biologging data in data repositories. And I want to talk today about key value pairs and no SQL databases. But before I dive into, into the topic, um, I want to give you a, a very brief introduction to, to biologging, as I think that not everyone in this room uh, might be fully uh, into biologging and the challenges uh, the data is associated with. Biologging is the methodology to investigate the behavior, physiology, and ecology of animals under natural conditions. And this is usually done by putting small recorders mounted uh, on free ranging animals. By this, we can obtain uh, a time series, which can be analyzed to understand the hidden life of the animals. For example, the seasonal movement, foraging behavior, or annual cycle routines. This is nothing new. It has been done since the 60s in the marine environments, somewhat later also in the terrestrial environments. And today we are not only uh, monitoring the animal itself, but we can also monitor the physical environment in which the animal lives, uh, like temperature, radiation, or GSM coverage. And we also have a large range size range of species we are monitoring, everything from elephants to Daphnia. You, you see an example of a Daphnia track in an aquarium on the right hand side. And this brings us to a couple of challenges uh, we have to, we face when we work with biologging data. The first, the first challenge is that we are really dealing now with uh, big data. The data ex is exponentially increasing. So I want to illustrate this with a small example. When I started in the, in, in the 90s, we had a project where we put a simple, a simple collar on moose. Uh, and within four years, we got 4,000 moose positions. And this uh, amounted to 15 data records per animal and year. And this is not a really hard way to deal with. 13 years later, with a little more sophisticated GPS, we had 5,000 moose positions within two weeks. This amounted to 5,000 data records per animal and year. And then again, 13 years later, we are working with physiological sensors. Uh, for example, an acceleration sensor in, which measures acceleration in three axes with 30 hertz, 30 measurements per second, which ends us up with almost a billion data records per animal and year. To make things worse, <laughs> we, also, we also use tracking radar to track individual birds and bats. And this can give us in a very short time period uh, more than 50,000 time series for more than 140 taxa. A second challenge we face is that we see an a, a huge diversity of sensors and data formats, and it's increasing all the time, increasing the complexity. Again, my example in the 90s, we had a simple GPS. It was one single provider. It was some, one single sensor, and we got the data in one single format. 13 years later, we had temperature, acceleration, and GPS, three sensors on the, on the collar. Now we had more competition. There were five different providers selling us collars and they were delivering data in eight different formats. And now with physiological sensors, we have 15 different sensor types. 
19 different providers and 36 different formats. And with this, it becomes kind of obvious that it can be tricky to do this in a relational database, in a relational database management system. Here, just uh, a picture of uh, another sensor that you see something else than just call us on Moose. Uh, this is a multi-sensory logger on a great snipe, measuring pressure, altitude, uh, pressure for altitude and geolocation, acceleration for behavior, again, clock and light sensor for geolocation and temperature. So a possible solution is to use key value paths. And you all have stumbled across key, key value paths, even though you might not have thought about it. Uh, when you use XML, when you use JSON, then you use key value paths. However, in this context, it's mostly used as data transport containers. What we try to do is we use it for direct data storage in a NoSQL database. So the traditional solution would be, uh, or is currently, if you have two sensors in a traditional system, you build two different tables with two different structures. So for example, the first table would be a GPS table giving you longitude, latitude, and height, and the acceleration table giving you the X and Y acceleration. Two different structures in the database. In real life, it would look like something like this. This is the data schema from, from VRAM as it looks currently. It's only a subset. Uh, you, I show you eight different sensors in different formats. So we ended up with a lot of tables which have different structures. And from this image, you can, you can imagine that if we want to add one single sensor or one new format and put in new tables, then we have to redo much of the, of the data schema in our database system. To get around this, we are using the key value pair solution, which means that we, instead of having different, different tables, we have one single generic table structure uh, where we just keep track of the key and value pairs, which order they are in a kind of lookup table. And then we can put everything you have on the left side in the GPS table into the generic table. If we want, then want to add another sensor, we just define it, the key value pairs and the order in our lookup table, and in it goes into the same uh, table. In real life, it would look something like this. Uh, the, the blue is uh, the more traditional approach, uh, still using, using uh, relational, relational uh, tables, uh, where you have a data set, um, a one-to-many relation, uh, you have several data sets in a project, you have uh, several events connected to a data set. An event in, in this case would be a sensor deployment or an instrument deployment. Then you have the organism which it's deployed on and the actual instrument. In the sensor table, we keep track of our key value pairs, what sensors do we have? How are they defined? And then the actual data is going into the record table. We implemented this in a Mongo database with several data sets. Currently, we have five different data sets in this, in this system. Uh, it's the great snipe geolocator data set, then three tracking radar data sets and one more traditional GPS moose tracking data set. Our next steps would be to move everything we have in the RAM and can move systems into the new joint structure. We will build an API for access uh, and define the endpoints, the filters, the export formats. Then we of course have to test the performance and plan to publish and release everything in spring 2024. So my last slide, my take home message for you, 
When it comes to biologging data, we are facing a couple of challenges. The fast increasing number of sensor type and data formats and the exponentially increasing amount of data, which makes a static database structure too slow and also too expensive to adapt all the time. Our solution to this is to use a key value pair approach in a NoSQL database, which gives us the possibility to a fast and simple adaptation to the new and changing requirements, and also adds scalability to the system uh, regarding the amount of data and the type of data. Thank you. Thank you, Jorge. Um, I didn't see anything uh, online. Any questions from the room? Lots of them. Hi, uh, Peter Lismet from Imbo, Belgium. Uh, very interesting approach. Do, have you seen others also using this approach? I've seen different models floating around, but this one is, uh, is new to me. Have you seen others doing this? Uh, I, haven't, I haven't seen it implemented, actually. I mean, there, as you say, there are other models floating around. Uh, we are, of course, in contact, uh, but nobody really had done it, actually, in the, in the MongoDB. And we are, I have to admit, we are still not 100% sure if this would be, from a performance point of view, the best way to approach it. But we will see. My question. Yeah. Do you have an estimate of how many records per second you are going to insert update fetch in the sensor table? Um, it, de it depends. Of, of course, it depends on the sensor. And usually, usually the data is, is coming um, in chunks, uh, so to say, uh, because a sensor usually doesn't deliver streaming, streaming data. Uh, for, for performance reasons. It usually aggregates the, the data to, let's say, 10, 50 measurements and then sends it in some way. So um, I think the insert, the insert and update part is not, is not the, big, the big problem. I think that the fetch to get it from the database will be the challenge. We, uh, Doug uh, from Oslo, we talked about it before. Uh, I just want to highlight again that when we are building these digital twins, we are very interested in the live feed of this data and, mm. and that we could get a grip on these huge data streams and see if we can handle it on the, yeah. on the digital twins. Yeah, and as I promised you, we will look into this. <laughs> oh, can you take this one? Uh, I can see how you, I can see how the key value pair works for the storage, but how easy is it to query then afterwards? Can you sort your moose by average temperature or retrieve all the individual, yeah, inside a certain geographic polygon? Yeah, I haven't talked about this part, how to, re how to retrieve it, but um, basically, basically the, the main storage will be in key value pairs. What we then do is to, to twist the data, so to say, Back into into a more into a more um, traditional traditional model, so that it would be easier to query it. On the other hand, and I have to admit, I'm not I'm not that much into this. Uh, I mean, if you if you're losing Cassandra, if you're if you're using uh, Solar, these are index databases which are built exactly for this type of problems. Thank you, Jorge. Uh, uh, we've got to move on. Uh, next speaker up is Peter de Smet from Imbo in Belgium. Uh, and the title of his talk is How We Developed the Data Exchange Format Lessons Learned from Camera Traps Data Package. 